Welcome to this episode of Green Pastures. The topic for today is evangelization among youth. We have wonderful panel here today. I'm Desil. I come from a small place in Kerala called Thudubura. I'm currently settled in Bangalore. I'm married. I have two children and I work with an IT company. I'm Aisha Day. I'm from Chennai. I finished my college right now. My name is Evita Emanuel. I'm from Cochin, Kerala. I just finished my 12th. Hi, I'm Deepson and I'm coming from Andaman Nicobar Islands. I am an assistant professor in mechanical in the field of engineering. My name is Noel Panjadekira. I'm from the United States of America, and I'm currently in my second year of college. I'm majoring in biology, pre-med. So Noel, you're from US. Tell me, what are your views about this topic? So whenever I hear about evangelization, I always think about Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and that is, go out to all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And that's one of our duties as a Catholic, as being Catholic, so it's very important to me. I personally feel that uh, evangelization is a duty, uh, a privilege that God has given to each one of us. I think uh, evangelization should actually begin at home because uh, kids these days are way ahead of what we learned when we started growing up. And I think parents should start uh, teaching the you know, word of God from home. I mean, when the kids get that foundation, they can go out into the world more confident of what they've been taught at home, of what values, especially being a Catholic, there are so many things that these, the kids today are not aware of. So for me, I think the foundation begins between a parent and a child. I think you're absolutely right, because these days when kids start growing up, they're moving more, you know, they're going away from prayers. You know, many people, they don't even have family prayers, they stop praying. So I think that's when everything begins, all the, you know, loneliness, depression. Every third person, every third adolescent had a lot of depression. So I think that's the main reason that they're going away from prayers, no Bible, nothing. This is, they have their own lives, technology, you know, it's just taking away all, all, them totally away from the, you know, spiritual life, the connection with God. I agree with your, all your ideas and uh, it is, as he says, it starts from the house. The church also plays a big role in developing that and even the society plays a big role in that. On the other side, as we become, uh, as we grow up, as a youth, it, uh, it is uh, not easy to find out which is right and which is wrong. As a child, when it grows, what is the difference between good and evil, you don't know. It is the house which starts as a small nursery then the catechism classes and as we grow in that evangelization starts up. And I would like to say that the youth right now, they are suffering because they, well, there are two things among youth. First, they don't listen to elders. They think that you know once somebody tells them, an elderly person comes and advises them something and tells them something that you have to do this, they close their mind. They're like, you know, no. I don't want to listen to this person. And on the contrary, if a friend comes and says the very same thing that you know you could stop drinking, stop smoking or something, that person takes it. So that is why it's a moral obligation that we have to bring the word to such people, to our friends, in our circles itself, not, not very far. So I feel this is a point which, has, which is actually we have to consider. I'd like to give a small you know, example over here actually. My, uh, my daughter, she's two now. My name is Gianna. Um, when she was at my in-laws place, uh, when she was around a year old, they used to pray, they pray every evening at around 9, 9.30. And you know, that was normal. So she was at that age, seeing them in the prayer room, uh, praying at that time. So what it surprised all of them was the one of the days, uh, they were all, they came from outside at around probably eight o'clock. As soon as they entered the house, she just ran to the prayer room, which is just beside, beside the entrance, and she was kneeling there, a one-year-old child. So that's the way youth get influenced by their parents. And uh, when they were sitting in a group, one of them was missing. She actually went all the way to the bedroom, called him up, and brought him to the prayer room. So they start getting those foundations right from grandparents, parents, and even maybe as siblings. Adding to him, I would like to share my experience on my college days when I was studying in an engineering college when I was doing my post graduation. After attending this retreat, uh, it's very easy to uh, say all these things, but when it comes into practical life, it is very tough. 
I studied in an engineering college which was run by a Hindu uh, things. They don't have all these uh, beliefs on everything. If you want to go to church, you can go outside, go and get it back. We started a small prayer cell inside that where the Catholics, the Protestants, only the Christians joined up. And uh, in the evening time, somewhere around uh, late night at around 10 o'clock, we'll assemble in one room. We'll have a small prayer, we'll sing a song. This started continuing for a short time. Once the management came to know, they came for stopping us in this area. Because we were singing songs and people were able to listen to it. They came, they said to us, this is not right. And uh, when it further grew up, they asked us to stop it. But evangelization, you cannot stop it. It is like a flood. The more you stop it, it increases. Mm -hmm. So initially we started with uh, three members. The day when we stopped it, it was somewhere around five. After two months, we saw the situation was normal. Again, we started and that time it was seven. It took us somewhere around six months. We were ended up into nearly 18 to 20 people were there. And it was not only Catholics and Christians. We had got Hindus, we had got Muslims joining. And the, when it comes to the studying part and the academic part, we saw a difference in our results. We were all like 80% somewhere. Suddenly we got up into 90s grades. We saw gradual increase and people were feeling what is happening. So all these Hindus of those who were seeing, because we were doing in one room and they started coming and joining with us. So they also came in prayer. There were days when um, we'll go outside on Sundays, church and we'll get tired. They'll come and wake us up at 10 o'clock. You have to come and they'll start singing songs and start praying. So it is how we take up in our careers. Wherever we are, if we start it, then people of the other religion will also follow it. They see what is the fruit of it. If we get some fruit, they come behind it. And still that prayer cell has been continuing. People are joining. There will be persecutions. There will be troubles. But you should withstand with that. And today if we are in such a position, it is because of all those prayer meets. That's very interesting. So I can actually relate to that in a way. Um, in the U.S. where I'm from, I'm actually from Columbus, Georgia, and every Saturday evening we have a prayer meeting session. We have about 60 people. Um, we have English section, the Malayalam section. Uh, we do praise and worship, talk, um, testimony, intercessory prayer. We've been doing it for 20 years now. Every Saturday evening, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. And everybody just has a great time. The level of energy is just so powerful. And I just, just wanted to share that. I mean, it's, no, it's good that we have our small groups wherever we go. And, but the problem nowadays is that, like for example, you attend a retreat. Five days you're there. You're completely in the presence of God. Now, as soon as you step outside, you start facing all the difficulties. You, you start looking at you know, people the way they are. And what happens then is like you start uh, wondering, should I spread the word? I mean, am I not happy with what I have right now? And then that the, you know, the decision to do your evangelization starts getting corrupt. And you start going into, your, into the worldly changes. You start accepting that as part of your lifestyle. So unless the youth are actually strong enough or they are not determined to spread the word of God, I think evangelization session will actually take a hit. And I would say, as you said, that prayer groups are places that are good, to, good places where you can grow. But I would say when you're coming for a retreat, when you're coming any place or you're praying, you need, you should have a person, uh, though you, uh, they say that you, you have your Lord with you, a spirit to guide you. It will be the best if you have a friend with you who's praying along with you. So that, you know, when you fall, you feel tired, you feel like, you know, let's just not pray today or let's just not say uh, the word of God or proclaim it or tell it to somebody who needs it today. My friend will come and tell me because this happened to me when I was in my hostel. Uh, I came back from my retreat. I shared the word of God with her, told her 
know these these things and you can you know like you know about joy everlasting joy and you know you can the peace that nobody can take from you and that is when you know she also felt like yeah this is you know something good and i should also she's a hindu and she also started praying along with me and then slowly it happened that you know as time goes by you become a little lukewarm like you know you, there's nobody to you know push you you know come on since your parents are not there you don't pray in the evening at times so that is when she used to come she's like come let's pray so now if somebody else is saying come let's pray you can't say like no that will be very bad so that is when i'll be like okay fine let's pray and i'll also pray along with her and there were times when she was not there and she'll feel tired and she'll feel bored i'll go, I'll go to her room i'll be like come let's pray together and slowly it happened so that you know that there were moments when i was so dejected things that i know being a christian being a catholic that i know she comes and tells me why have you why are you saying like this why are you getting dejected you come and tell me that your god is there for you where is where has your faith gone you know these days youth need a really really good connection you know which parents should there is to expose them to god they are the ones to let them know that you no know, there's a christ for you who is there for you always i agree with that actually uh youth is they are actually young adults exactly. they are not children they are not somebody who's small that you dictate them like you know you do this you can do that you can give decisions you can give events to them that they can actually perform and organize they should not be told that you know you should do this because i know my mama keeps she keeps telling me that you know you know go fold the clothes it depends upon the tone she uses if she says go fold your clothes you know whatever it is i attend retreats or whatever i feel why is she dictating me but on the same time if she says you know i'm really tired you know you could help me with folding clothes or you know you could do this for me i would jolly well turn off the tv or whatever i am doing i can i will go and do it so that's one thing that you know they should trust us they should you know it should be more of like we should be treated as young adults more of like children i'd like to add to that point actually uh see if you look at uh, uh csi or protestant worship it's mostly music right they reach out to the audience in a very powerful way music and anybody would go and be part of their uh, worship praise and worship because the way they present themselves is this you know this praises and the worship that they give to god and their major you know one of their major uh, success points is that the youth of today love music they love to dance they love to move around and that they have used to bring more people to them i mean i think the way to approach a, the youth is to find what they really like at that particular age so if it is in the church i mean a lot of people like even adults these days don't listen to the sermon you know half an hour you are just you know whiling away time or one hour but if you are able to reach out to an audience like the youth who are very fresh in their energy through music through dance I mean I think that would be a better treatment towards them to pull them towards God in a better way rather than forcing them to come to God you cannot force anybody and then expect them to stay there forever there should be an interest level and that energy in the youth should be kept that enthusiasm should be always you know blown up and you know present they should be presented a good side so that they can uh, preach about that to their friends to their siblings to their parents to anybody they meet outside uh, one more perspective of evangelization is uh, in recent days what people used to do in different areas in my area especially they will organize camps youth camps and uh, uh, youth retreats it will be not in churches it will be in an, a different area other than the church where church teachings have been given where you will have something like social service camps where you can outreach people find out the difficulties of the locality you can serve them as uh, how the missionaries do it you can learn about all those things in a different form plus when you are into that evangelization fully you can uh, come to know what is how the uh, service has to be done to the society so evangelization adds something to the society from our part also i'll just add to that so when you like when we talk about csr activities or outreach activities the audience that we're dealing with is always mixed you don't know whether they know god itself 
There might be people who have not even heard the word God. There are also people who are, uh, who are Christians, but who don't have the kind of faith. So when we reach out to a mixed audience, I think the first thing about evangelization is we should be sure about our faith. Our word should, our, what we have learned should be very clear. If somebody asks us, like, okay, I'm going through a trial, and at that time, will I, you know, revoke God? Will I say that my God has failed me? So I should be in a position to tell the poor or the disabled that God is there with them whenever or wherever they are at any point in time. So that, that strength in my faith should be very sure. Unless I'm very sure about my faith, I think CSR or outreach activities to a mixed crowd should always be taken with caution. I feel like, you know, small, small works where people notice you, that is enough. It is not, everybody has a different call. A doctor has a call in his field. A person has a call in their, in their respective fields. Everybody, all the youth, they don't have to go out there and they like, you know, Jesus is the Lord, come, let's all, you know, praise and worship. Yeah, that is important, very important. But this is, everybody has their own role. We have to find ours. Example is coming to my mind when you talked about small scale. Uh, I have a, my brother-in-law, uh, my wife's younger brother, He's right now in the second year of engineering. He is uh, physically challenged by birth. Uh, he's actually a testimony against abortion. And um, he doesn't have two hands. He's stunted by growth from waist below. So he doesn't have one knee, so his uh, walking is you know, distorted. And uh, he is a living uh, evangelist by himself, as in he doesn't have to like what you said, he doesn't have to, you know, have a bandwagon to go outside and preach the word of God. So he uh, is studying in a normal school. He is uh, where, and he studied in a normal school. He's in a normal engineering college. And his friends have accepted him as, as one of them. And the greatest fact is that when God took away his uh, physical appearance, he blessed him hundredfold. Because he's a singer. He sings uh, at a lot of colleges. Uh, they invite him as a chief guest because uh, he's a living testimony against abortion. His parents, so whenever people see him, they immediately turn to their parents to understand, you know, how they went through this or how they accepted him against abortion. So he, the fact that he was already physically challenged was aware to them before, like by the fifth or sixth month. And a lot of people, the doctors, everybody told that you have to abort because there's no point in, you know, having this child in the world but they stood firmly against abortion. And they brought him into this world, and today he's a living testimony. He is an evangelist as himself. He goes out there, a lot of people are coming to his parents to understand God. What is it in the US? How is it there? Over there, it's very, <clears throat> it's very interesting. So we have many big preachers like you know, Billy Graham. Well, now he's very old, but Benny Hinn, um, all these people I'm sure you're aware of. They have these crusades, massive crusades, thousands of peoples. I've attended one. I've attended Benny Hinn's in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was an amazing experience. I felt the Holy Spirit. And also, just to add on to that, I'm actually part of the music ministry in my prayer group. I've been playing drums for 13 years now, and my brother actually plays the keyboard, and my mom sings, so we're like a family band. I feel that our Catholic Church requires a very strong music industry. We need our own youthful songs because I remember uh, we were singing uh, for our power retreat and I was singing the same song in my hostel. One of the girls there, she is uh, a non-Catholic Christian. She came and told me that, you know, why do you keep singing our songs? Why do you keep copying our songs? You don't have songs of your own. I said, I do have, we have songs of our own. And when I start, when I sang that, she said, it's a very old song. So. We need our, the youth, it's not that our youth, they are not capable. It's not that we don't, we are, it's just that we are lacking. We can compose music for a movie, for a short film, for college culturals, but we are not ready to do it for our own church, which God has gifted us, where God, these talents which we are using for others, actually God has gifted us, which we actually can use. Because as we know, music, as he said, music is our, the youth's the thing right now. Wherever we go, music is the one thing that attracts us. And they say, when you sing, you praise the Lord twice. And one more thing is that 
the devil, it's using music in a very powerful way. We have a lot of satanic music and we still listen to it. And it's so catchy that we listen to it. But the same person, that you know, we can also compose, we can also change that, but we are lacking in it. I think uh, when it comes to music, there are two things. One is, uh, it's not just the music, it's also the visuals that you go through. Now you look at in a TV, okay, you watch a new movie, there's a very catchy song, there's a very, uh, there's a very beautiful actress or a very uh, you know, handsome actor and the, the youth who watches that start getting involved in the characters involved there. So when you, suppose it's your favorite actor there, then your whole uh, mind starts getting, starts liking that music, that song. So over, over, the, over the period, you just keep listening to that song and that's how you get absorbed. So any movie or you see your favorite actor, you like their songs. And that visual is stuck in your head. Now the problem with uh, religion in general, there is no catchy thing going on there, right? We have a bunch of people who are singing their songs. There is no visuals there. There are no beautiful actors or beautiful actresses there. So naturally, people, the youth of today are, are lost because they're like, oh, it's a song, fine, it's just boring. I mean, they sing it. But if, if the youth are pulled towards the actual word of God before they go into the music ministry and you know, they share the music, they, should, they will be able to be more involved there. Along with music, that word of God should be attached so that they know that they're not singing just a, just a song. It's, some, it's related to somebody almighty. And I think that is also a part that, you know, the youth should start getting involved in. And I think parents, friends, everybody should start uh, building the youth towards such an outlook, towards, uh, I think, Christianity or even being a Catholic. Uh, on my point of view is, uh, as India is a very young country, when we see the stats, uh, more than 80% of the people are youth. The other part of the world, there are aged people in that numbers. So, as Indians, uh, youth plays a very big role in those areas where, as he has said, then uh, those people joining up in those things. When you join in those things, it is uh, again the teaching of the church which says that the Holy Spirit should be there in that. And every youth should not do the same things what the others are doing it. People have got different gifts, which I feel is, and you have to realize which is the gift which you have got. If someone has got singing things, then they can go for singing. If someone has got prophesying things, you can go for prophesying. If someone has got a word of God sharing things, as he says, the word of God has to be known first. So we have to understand and give God time to tell us what we have to do it. Uh, if we imitate others, it will not come, it, uh, come into us. Because we will be just copying their characters. We will be just making them as model and we will be drifted towards that side. We have to find out what is our gift. But we will also not come to know very fast until and unless we get the Holy Spirit. I think uh, the youth for evangelization as part of the youth is about teaching them priority. Um, for example, if I have booked a movie, I would definitely not want to be late and miss the starting part of it. But if I'm asked to go to the Mass, what happens? I miss it. I'm like, okay, I'll go after the Gospel. Okay, I'll go after the sermon. It's anyway boring. And again, so that's the mentality that uh, we've been, you know, we've been growing up with. I mean, we see our friends maybe, or maybe at, at home parents are not praying. So naturally, I mean, the church is ignored. And unless that is strong, unless a, the priority that the parents have uh, given their children is not strong, saying that the church, Jesus, is the first above all. Evangelization cannot be successful among the youth. Today we have learned a lot of things, I guess, starting from you, where you said it is an important part of our life, where we have to start, because it is, that is what we are called for. And to the point how we have to do it from a small scale, through a camp, as a person, Everything matters and all summed up, I would say that, as you said, the priority as everything, I would like to conclude by saying that we have to, first of all, the word of God has to be, has to touch us. And God said, until unless I call you, you cannot come to me. So we have to wait upon the Lord and wait for his call.
We hope you had fun the way we had. Till we meet next time. Stay, 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 stay.